Hey everyone, Kevin Hamlin here. I go by Sky Burial on Nugget Bridge and Twitter, and you're watching my VGC laddering series, Spire to the Sky, which we play on Battle Spot on Pokemon Sun and Moon. Um, still playing with this sand team that I've really been enjoying, um, which we based off of Japan Sand. Um, and still kind of hovering around in the 1600s, um, trying to pick up some traction, and I, I took a couple losses on some battles that I did off screen. So uh, hopefully we get to turn that around. It looks like my opponent is running Aaron Zeng's team um, from the London International with the Zerka tree. Um, I actually really like my matchup against this team, so I think I'm just gonna lead hard sand. Um, I'll put Tapu Finney in the back. No, uh, yeah, I'll put Tapu Finney. Mm. I guess I could lead Tapu Finney in the front. Mm. He's got the two electric types. So I'll go Doug Trio in the front, Tapu Coco in the back, and, um,. I think I want Celesteela for his Psychic types. I think that sounds really good. Because he'll have Ice Beam and Dazzling Gleam and Moonblast, so Salamence doesn't look good here. So we'll go Celesteela as well. Um, yeah, so this is kind of... <laughs> This is like the boring way to run the team, right? Like, um, but it, the reality is that we get to have our weather advantage right away, so um, it's it's our game to lose, basically. Um, my opponent has no means of fake out, and he actually leads with. <laughs> I think I kind of just want a double rock slide here, um, but that sounds risky. So instead, I will go for a switch into Celesteela and a Rock Slide. Um, and the thing that I'll be switching into Celesteela... Why don't I just go for Double Rock Slide? Um, I'll, switch, I'll switch into Tapu Koko and I'll go for a Rock Slide. I want to maintain my weather advantage, so that sounds really good at this stage in the game. Alright, so my opponent withdraws Pelipper and sends in Zerkatree, so that's actually really good for me because I can just go for an Earthquake last turn, barring like a burn on my Dugtria. So um, I get to bring my Tapu Koko in. Um, and we set up the Electric Surge, and Golduck goes for Protect. So, perfect turn. Uh, pretty straightforward for us. Um, I think on this next turn, um, my opponent's probably going to go for a, um, like a switch into Pelipper. So, I think I am just going to go for another Rock Slide, and I'll go for a Discharge. He doesn't really have a way to hit my Tapu Koko because I'm running into Salt Vest, and um, he doesn't have a way to Wide Guard or anything, so he's in a really awkward position right now. So I'll just go for this. Um, I outspeed the Golduck, so, and he can't go for Protect again, so he has to switch something in, and nothing on his team really wants to take a Discharge. Um, and my duck tree is going to be immune. So, um, not only that, but the Zerka tree really doesn't have a way to hit my duck trio really hard. Um, I mean, it, it could have an energy ball and that'll deal, deal a good bit of damage, but I don't think it'll even take it down to Sash. So, um, yeah, I'm in, I'm in a solid position right now. Um, Zerka tree... <laughs> he tries to, he tries to go for a hard predict, that's interesting. Um, so we get to get a Discharge off against this Golduck, and um, as long as it connects, we get to get a single target um, Rock Slide off against this Zerka Tree, so that's going to be really big. Um, so yeah, um, I've, I've never, well, I mean, I was a really big fan of Zerka Tree in the early format, because um, a lot of people were running like bulky or angry teams, and it handled those really well, but um, at this stage, it's it's not really that good, I don't think. Um, 
So my Doug Trio is relatively untouched. Um, and I have a really good position here because I outspeed my opponent's Pelipper and I have an Assault Vest. So I'm just gonna go for a Thunderbolt on the Pelipper and switch in my Gigalith. This way, if he's Focus Sash, I get to take his Pelipper out. Um, and I get to position myself for an Earthquake on the Tapu Koko next turn. So that's really, really good. Um, all right, so Tapu Koko goes for a Dazzling Gleam that shouldn't do much damage to either of my Pokemon. It gets a crit on my Tapu Koko. So a little bit unfortunate there, but you saw how much it did to Gigalith. All right, and it looks like we're gonna get to take out our opponent's Pelipper. Does it go for a Tailwind? <laughs> we, get the the, we get the Paralysis just to add insult to injury. <laughs> And he goes for a Scald on my Tapu Koko, um, which, I mean, yeah, that, that shouldn't even take us out with Sandstorm damage. So, um, I think this next turn, I just go for a Thunderbolt onto the opposing Tapu Koko, um, assuming he doesn't take me out, which he probably will, and I'll, uh, I'll go for an Earthquake. But I think my opponent's probably going to forfeit, um, yeah. If, if I was in my opponent's position, I would forfeit. All right, so he decides to stick it out. Um, goes for the Thunderbolt onto my Tapu Koko, knowing that he outspeeds. Um, and I get my Earthquake off, and it's going to be sequel target. So once again, just huge damage on this Tapu Koko. Um, yeah, and it takes it out. So uh, we get to t pick up a quick win here. Um, and so we'll go ahead and go for a second game. Uh, good game to Rhiannis. Uh, and yeah, that that was that was really really fun. So yeah, um, let's uh, let's see what we get matched up with on the next game. So yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that to be over that fast. That was really really cool. Uh, I think that's kind of like the name of the game with hyper offense, right? Um, so we'll just hop right back in. Uh, and yeah, so still really enjoying this team. Uh, it's it's maintaining like a pretty solid uh, win to loss ratio, and if I keep it up like this, then steadily I'll just climb up in rank. So um, yeah, I uh, I've I've really really been enjoying it. It's kind of like this two steps forward, one steps back uh, way that I go with the wins. So yeah, um, I. Uh, I love this format so far. Like, VGC 2017 is so, so fun. And, like, there's a lot of balancing factors that uh, are... It, it's amazing how, like, a limited... Okay, so we get down paired against July. Um, and July is running a Torkoal Lilligant team. So I think I am going to go for Gigalith and Tapu Fini. Um, my opponent also doesn't have a Tapu, so... Yeah, this looks really, really good. I'll put Doug Trio in the back in the event that he brings Zerkatry in the front. And I think I kind of want Celestila um, to take out that Gastrodon with an Energy Ball. Um, altogether, this looks really, really solid. Um, I've got really good options for Trick Room if he does manage to get it up. So uh, yeah, we'll go for this. All right, cool. Uh, good luck to my opponent. Um, so yeah, it's really weird team, honestly. Like a lot of fast stuff and a lot of like trick room stuff. Um, but the only thing that I noticed that like really benefited from trick room was the uh, the Torkoal. So uh, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> All right. So Lilligant and Torkoal come out exactly what I was expecting. Um, and yeah, so we get our terrain up and he's got no way to take it away. So he can't sleep powder us, which is really good. Um, what I'm really interested to see is, all right, so our sand stream goes up first. So we lose the weather war, but honestly, that's not too troublesome because we've got misty terrain up. So I think what I'm going to do on this next turn is just go for a rock slide and a swagger. Um... I expect like an after you eruption, 
but uh, both of my both of my Pokemon are gonna be really good against that. So yeah, uh, we'll we'll just get some good some good damage off here. All right, so no after your eruption coming out, it looks like Crocodile comes in uh, to deal a little bit of uh, to slow down my Gigalith a little bit, and I don't mind. Interesting, so Lilligant goes for a Solar Beam onto my... Is it my Tapu Fini? Onto my Tapu Fini. I should be able to take that. I don't take that. That's really unfortunate. I wasn't expecting that. Um, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, so I do a little bit of damage to the Lilligant. Um, I think I will probably bring in my Celesteela here. And switch into my Doug Trio. Um, I'm really going to have to manage this. Uh, offensive Lilligans aren't really that popular, so I wasn't really playing for it. Um, hmm. Alright. So, I think I'll go for an Energy Ball on this Crocodile. Um... Yeah. Unfortunate turn of events there, I'll just say. In a very unfortunate turn of events. Um, I think my opponent targets my... Okay, so my opponent probably brings in Torkoal. Oh, brings in Zerkatry. Okay. Um, does he protect his Crocodile? I'm probably going to switch in my... Um, all right, no, he just goes for a Rock Slide. And it does hit my Duck Trio, which is unfortunate. Um, that'll break our Sash. But I don't think that really matters much in this matchup. And I think I get to take out this Crocodile. I don't. Um... All right, so I think on this next turn, I'm going to go for a Rock Slide and a switch into my Gigalith. I'm hoping that my opponent goes for like a hard, like a volt switch into my Gigalith. So. Alright, so he just goes for a Thunderbolt into my Gigalith, and that's fine. Um, but we find out that he's Scarf, which is good to know. Um. So on this next turn, I think I just go for a wide guard and an earthquake. Um, I'm not too, I guess he could bring in his Lilligant and then switch in the sun. But then he's not gonna get the chlorophyll boost. All right, so Lilligant does come in. Hmm. All right, I think I will I think I'll just stick to my original game plan and take out the Zerka tree because it's really, um... Hmm. I think I'll go for an Iron Head, actually, on the Lilligant, and I'll go for a Rock Slide. His Lilligant's not gonna outspeed my Gigalith, and his Zerka tree doesn't really threaten uh, either of my Pokemon that I have out right now, so I'll go for an Iron Head and a Rock Slide. Um... All right, so Lilligan goes for a Protect, so that's a bit unfortunate. Um, and his Zerkatry goes for another Thunderbolt on my Gigalith. Um, so, yeah, we fell right into that. But, um, yeah. And his Zerkatry avoids. That's also unfortunate. Um, hmm. I think I'm just going to do the same thing. I think the Lilligant is the bigger threat here. Um, and I'll go for another... Mm. I guess my opponent could switch his Torkoal into the Lilligant slot, so I'll go for an Earthquake and a Wide Guard. Alright, so actually this turn goes perfectly because we're going to get this uh, this Earthquake off against the Torkoal. It's not going to be boosted by Sand Force, but it's going to do a lot of damage. So, um... 
He's gonna get to take out our Giggle with, that, with this Thunderbolt, but um, I don't know if Torkoal's gonna take this Earthquake. It's Stab. And Zerkatree's definitely not gonna take the Earthquake. So, yeah. Uh, all right, so Torkoal, it doesn't do as much as I would want to Torkoal. Um, hmm. Actually, my opponent could go for like an after you heat wave and it would still probably take me out. Um, so I think on this next turn, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bank on Celestia being able to live. I will go for a protect on my Dugtrio. And I think I will go for a flamethrower on the Lilligant. Because it's 100% accurate and it's sun boosted. So. Alright, so he does go for an after you and possibly like a heat wave. Flamethrower onto my Doug Trio. Alright, so this goes perfectly. Alright, so I get to get a sun boosted flamethrower off on this little again. That's definitely gonna take it out. And, um, yeah, Flamethrower, a bit of an uncommon move, but we get the special defense boost, which is really important against this Torkoal. Um, yeah. Usually it's gonna be like Eruption and Heat Wave on Torkoal. That's been my experience of it so far. Um, anyway, I'll just go for a Leech Seed on the Torkoal and an Earthquake, and I expect to see a forfeit here. All right, my opponent doesn't forfeit, so um, I get another Earthquake off. And uh, yeah, that's gonna do a good bit of damage. And uh, our Leech Seed connects. So really good stuff so far. Um, Heat Wave does come out. And it shouldn't take out my Celesteela. It doesn't. So uh, yeah. That was a really that that was a really fortunate turn of events, and um, I don't think that my Celestia would have gone down to the uh, to the first heat wave, but it probably would have gone down to another. So um, I'm glad that I protected Deb Trio there, just because um, the way that I expect would have expected it to play out is that Celestia would have gone down, and that Deb Trio would have taken my opponent out with an earthquake. So we get a 1-0 there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call this an episode, and, uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, please do, uh, subscribe if you enjoyed my video, and, uh, yeah, leave a comment, uh, let me know what you think of the team, whether you're new or returning to the channel, and, uh, yeah, stay tuned for more Aspire to the Sky, guys, I've got some really good episodes coming down the pipe, and, um, I'm, I'm really enjoying this team so far.